So, um, hello everyone. I'll be speaking today about computational work um, on the problem of uh, peptide binding. And uh, this is a collaboration with uh, George Westmansis from the Mayo Clinic. So, um, with COVID-19, um, we've all heard um, that the disease is, uh, it behaves like any disease. There is a range in uh, severity of symptoms that people experience, but it's perhaps uh, more pronounced with COVID-19 than other diseases. Uh, a good fraction of people who contract the virus show no symptoms whatsoever. Most show either no or mild symptoms, but a significant fraction show severe symptoms. And of course, um, uh, a small fraction show critical symptoms or even experience death as a result. So um, there are many factors influencing the disease severity and experts can speak better about this than I can. Um, age, sex, and in particular comorbidities are very significant and past exposure to similar viruses plays a role. But uh, a part of the equation here in terms of disease severity is also um, the innate differences in our immune systems. And essentially the genes we've inherited from our parents uh, play a role in um, how well our bodies fight off this disease or most diseases. So our topic of study here is um, to computationally predict um, one aspect of the innate difference in an individual's immune system, the so-called cellular response. So the cellular response is the first line of defense that uh, our bodies have in response to any uh, viral infection. Um, it is the mechanism by which um, foreign peptides introduced into uh, cells are chopped up into uh, small fragments called peptides. These then uh, can be transported to the cell surface where they can bind to cell surface receptors called MHC class one molecules. If bound this way, the um, infected cells become targets for killer T cells, which can come off and uh, kill the infected cells, either killed from a viral infection, or as it turns out, uh, this is the most effective defense that we have against cancer. Cancerous cells are also killed off this way. This is the first line of defense because um, if it kicks in once uh, we're infected, uh, the immune system, the killer T cells can kill off all the infected cells before they have a chance to get going. But if the cellular response fails, then the infected cells become factories. They start churning out many, many copies of the virus and uh, other aspects of the immune system have to take over. So the cellular response um, is, uh, as with all aspects of immunology, complex. Understanding it is very important. Um, it's critical for uh, understanding and predicting the severity of novel viruses, such as SARS-CoV-2, uh, for vaccine development targeting viruses, um, also understanding the impacts of viral mutations, how different viruses um, will affect uh, different people through the, their innate cellular immune response. And as I keep returning to the topic for cancer immunotherapy, which is the uh, area of expertise of my collaborator. Like many people, we turned our attention to COVID-19 uh, and repurposed a skill set. So in this case, the computational predictions are originally uh, targeting cancer immunotherapy. So, uh, and of course, um, all of this uh, same theory applies to autoimmune diseases. So the cellular uh, immune response at its core is a, a computational problem. If we have the blue peptides uh, in the uh, figure on the right, this is the protein fragment associated with the virus. The question is, will that uh, blue peptide bind inside a groove or a cleft inside the yellow cell surface molecule, the MHC1 molecule? Um, and the uh, immune response then will be dependent upon whether this protein fragment binds and whether it binds well enough for uh, the killer T cells to recognize it. The blue fragments, they come from the virus. Those are novel. Um, so given a new virus, we will have a, a completely new set of uh, peptides. The uh, yellow cell surface molecules, those are determined by our genes. And uh, each individual has um, up to six different um, MHC1 molecules determined by our inheritance, three from each parent. And um, the cell surface molecules, the MHC molecules, are among the most diverse in our genome. There are uh, approximately 21,000 variants in the human population. This is no accident. Evolution has ensured that 
um, this aspect of our immune system is very diverse so that um, we've been able to uh, survive past viral uh, infections. Um, but this also poses a very significant computational challenge, as I'll describe. So um, the core problem that we're um, tackling is how to apply computer science to predict whether the blue peptide will bind inside the yellow cell surface molecule. And to do this for a very wide range of peptides, all of those associated with the virus, and for the very wide range of cell surface receptors, the MHC1 molecules. Now, there's been uh, a lot of prior work, computational prior work. There's been experimental work that, of course, has provided uh, molecular information on uh, the structure of these molecules. And the computational work that's been very successful has been to apply uh, machine learning, no surprise there for those who have a background in computer science, and neural networks. So there's a package called NetMHC that has been trained extensively on the experimental data with the binding strength for known pairs of the blue-yellow molecules, the MHC1 peptide pairs. And based upon uh, a neural network structure, this program can predict, given a new peptide, how strong it will predict. And this inference is um, based upon uh, simply peptide sequence. So the sequence of letters, uh, these are the amino acids in the peptide, are paired with a label that corresponds to the cell surface molecule, the MHC1 molecule. There's a strength, that's all the experimental data. And so given many, many thousands such pairs, um, the neural network can be trained. And once it's trained, given a novel peptide sequence, a novel sequence of amino acids, it can predict how well that peptide will bind to a given MHC1 molecule. So here the peptide sequence would be the blue peptide molecule in the uh, drawing. And the label would correspond to the yellow cell surface receptor, the MHC1 molecule. Um, this is great. And neural networks are powerful in the sense that um, they can be easily trained and they can effectively, uh, very effectively make predictions based upon the data they're given. But the limitation here is there is absolutely no molecular data whatsoever. Um, we're simply training labels and letters. And um, also, the training data is taken for a very diverse set of experimental data. A lot of it, for instance, comes from um, HIV, a different virus, and the peptides associated with HIV. And the problem is, given a brand new virus like SARS-CoV-2, uh, most of the peptides have never been seen before. And a neural network will make predictions that are spurious because it's making inferences from a very different region of the peptide space. And so, um, our approach would, is to do molecular level simulations. And of course, there's been uh, a lot of prior work on this topic. Very sophisticated molecular simulation techniques are known uh, and widely used. One is called molecular dynamics. Um, there are also Monte Carlo based simulations. Um, they use a technique called simulated annealing and molecular docking is another approach. Software available for uh, such molecular level simulations are widely used, but they're special, uh, they're general purpose. They've been developed for broad classes of molecules binding, and they're extremely computationally intensive. Uh, to take a peptide and MHC1 pair and to use existing software to simulate it, it takes uh, days, sometimes weeks, to simulate a, simu a single binding um, event. Uh, so weeks of actually supercomputing time uh, to make a single prediction. And the scope of the problem we're confronting is we have um, 21,000 variants of the yellow cell surface molecules, the MH MHC1 um, molecules. And for SARS-CoV-2, um, if we focus just on the spike protein and we chop that up into little bits for the peptides, we have about 38,000 of those. So we're talking about 1 billion combinations that we want to simulate um, in terms of the strength. And if it takes uh, a week of supercomputing time each, we obviously don't have a billion weeks to study this. So our approach is twofold. On the one hand, um, we're creating highly customized software for molecular simulation. And uh, we're using uh, the details of the domain we're working in. So we're starting with the peptide. The peptides don't vary so much in terms of their length or their shape. We're starting with the peptides correctly aligned inside the cleft of the cell surface molecule, the MHC1 molecule. So we don't spend a lot of time just rotating the entire peptide in space. We place it exactly where it should be. And we perform the entire search 
uh, in the torsional space. So instead of moving the molecule around in three-dimensional space, we just twist and turn its bonds uh, to uh, try to find the optimal configuration. The, the other contribution is we're deploying this at scale. So we're using GPUs and then eventually cloud computing infrastructure to really throw computing power at the problem. And our goal, as I stated in the title, is to turn a billion days into a million minutes or perhaps one month of cloud computing time. So um, the challenges here, and I'll gloss over this, I'm almost out of time. Um, one thing, the experimental data is not complete. We don't have uh, full molecular models, uh, not only of all 21,000 variants, um, but we don't even have a good geographic spread. So this ties in with some of the pri previous talks. Most of the experimental data is for the variants of the MHC1, MHC1 molecules from uh, Western Caucasian demographics. So the other approach is we must infer the structure of the molecules and then simulate them. And so uh, final slide, the impact of this work, um, well, it's uh, relatively straightforward to um, determine for an individual what genes they have that code for the relevant molecules, the MHC1 molecules. It can be done through HLA typing, which is done for paternity testing. Given that information and given our computational infrastructure, we'll be able to predict for an individual how that individual will respond to a new pathogen, to a virus, to variants of the virus, um, for different individuals and for the effect of different vaccines on different viruses for different individuals. And of course, as I stated at the outset, uh, this work will apply not only to viruses, but also potentially to cancer immunotherapy and autoimmune diseases. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much.